Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us on the web over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the shows if you have not already done so. There are links in the show notes for in every episode to subscribe. Uh, you can also find us over on YouTube, Daily Motion, Blip.tv, uh, Vimeo, uh, Stitcher Radio, and TuneIn, and you can subscribe uh, via those avenues as well if you so desire. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the stories for uh, this episode, starting off over at Adafruit. They have a new uh, uh, tutorial, uh, a Raspberry Pi as an ad blocking access point. I thought this was pretty neat and thought I would share it for a relatively inexpensive you can amount of money. You can uh, follow this tutorial and have a Raspberry Pi that is a uh, an access point that blocks ads which is kind of cool so um definitely check it out uh if that's something you want to do i thought it was pretty neat it looks fairly simple and straightforward so uh definitely take a look over at techcrunch at uh, techcrunch.com codebender.cc makes it crazy easy to program your arduino board from your browser that's right this is a web-based arduino ide now we all know uh and love the arduino ide that comes that you can get to program uh an arduino and it's downloadable and you install it on your on your computer well the official arduino ide is a tour is a door dour piece of software designed for uploading code to the ubiquitous and super cool microcontroller it is a standalone not networked app that isn't very pretty to look at but what if you want to share code and upload programs right from your browser? Well, that's where CodeBender.cc comes in. It's a browser-based IDE that supports uploading to nearly any Arduino board. You can use the program to copy sample code, browse code uploaded by other users, and even store private snippets. Because it is a collaborative environment, you can clone bits of code and use it in your own projects. And there's even a curated list of cool snippets so it's founded by Vesalius georgia Zikis. boy i'm really mispronouncing that and alexandros balthus uh it came out of launch hub it's a european seed fund they basically uh you know created it as a as a way to to make uh, to 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 share uh, Arduino code easily because every time they do a computer class that was three hours long that was Arduino based they'd literally spend two to two and a half hours just getting the Arduino IDE installed on all the computers that they're trying to you know students computers that they're trying to teach and it, it'd leave them very little time um, to actually run the class so uh, this. It ended up being a quick and easy way for them to get everybody up and running really quickly. I think this is pretty cool. If any of you out there do Arduino stuff, definitely check this out. From Gizmodo, Ray Dolby, the innovator of cinema sound, has died. Now, who's Ray Dolby? Well, you have heard of, well, you may not have necessarily heard of Ray Dolby, but you've heard his work, Dolby Digital. If you have gone to a movie at any point, in the last 15, 20 years, easily 15, 20 years, you have heard Dolby Digital Sound. If you have DVDs, you have heard Dolby Digital Sound. If you get HDTV over the air or through a cable box, that's Dolby Digital Sound. Uh, if you have ever recorded on a modern AVC HD camcorder, anything, uh, those largely record a Dolby Digital stream otherwise known as an AC3 stream. If you've watched Blu-rays, you've heard Dolby Digital Sound. Dolby Digital Sound is the, or even on Blu-rays or HD DVDs, if you still have those, uh, Dolby True HD Sound. Those are all the product of a company called Dolby, which was founded by Ray Dolby. 
Now, Ray Dolby, unfortunately, he's he's gone. He has passed away. Uh, he died in San Francisco on, uh, what is this, uh, Friday, September 12th, um, Thursday, September 12th, at uh, the ripe old age of 80. He'll be remembered as the man who made the movies sound as spectacular as they look. Today, his technology is used basically in every movie theater in the country. This is true. Every movie theater you go to, the movies are distributed with the Dolby Digital sound. Um, before Dolby Digital, there was uh, the Dolby noise reduction, Dolby NR, Dolby A, Dolby B for uh, tape-based systems. He was a pioneer in audio systems, um, truly a legend. So we will be missing him and uh, hopefully... Uh, his legacy lives on for many years to come. From hackaday.com, the Arduino Yun. Yun means cloud. Now, we talked about the Arduino Yun. It's now available for sale uh, on the last episode. But this episode, I want to talk a little bit more uh, about the introduction video uh, that's included by the two guys who started the Arduino stuff. Um Basically, they've been looking for quite some time on how to bring the Arduino platform into the cloud. Ethernet and Wi-Fi shields technically work, and that's true. They do. I've got some shields that provide network connectivity, but it not it, it's really needs to be built into the Arduino. And um, basically, if you're processing data scraped from a web page, a microcontroller really isn't the best option. So that's where the Yun comes in. At its core, it's a regular Arduino Leonardo. Underneath that metal plate on the board, well, that's a system on a chip running Linux. Yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, the Linux side of the Yun is pretty similar to a Wi-Fi router dub, uh, running OpenWRT. There's a USB port for plugging in peripherals, native Wi-Fi support, 802, uh, all the way up to 802.11n, which is awesome. Uh, an Ethernet connector and enough RAM to do all the interesting stuff a small computer connected to the Internet can do. This is cool. I'm totally going to get one of these. Uh, to make all this web programming easier, for those of you who are new to Arduino, it also includes a bridge library that automates HTTP transactions between the Linux and microcontroller sides of the YUN. Uh, there's support for Tembu. It's an SDK for dozens of APIs that interact with Facebook, Dropbox, FedEx, and hundreds of other web services. Please go check the video out, especially if you're into Arduino stuff. This takes the Arduino platform forward, you know, several orders of magnitude. Really awesome. Definitely check it out. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. It's a little on the expensive side, but if you consider the price of a regular Arduino and then tack on an Ethernet uh, shield or a Wi-Fi shield, you know, you're already, you know, <laughs> way over what an Arduino Yun costs. So pretty, <clears throat> pretty neat. From MakeDesign.com, Little Bits snaps together a no-solder electronics kit. This I thought was cool. This is uh, for ages eight and up. It's basically a really easy way to learn electronics where you don't have to do any programming or any uh, uh, soldering or anything of that nature. It allows you to kind of snap together little things. It teaches electronics by making the connections irrelevant. There's no tangles of jumpers, wiring diagrams, or globs of solder. The programming is done for you. It uh, reduces the complexity of building circuits to basically snapping the parts together with the help of magnetic couplings. Pretty awesome. Um, it's for ages 8 and up. There's about 50 bits. Uh, they're all single function components, as you expect to see in a series of electronic modules. You have a, but a button bit, a dimmer bit, et cetera, et cetera. The pulse bit packs a 555 timer chip, which is kind of neat. You know, kind of gives you little pulses so you can do cool stuff. They're all color coded. You know, this this is literally, they have a Vimeo video, uh, in a Vimeo intro video. I definitely recommend that you check it out. It's a couple of minutes long, really neat. Um, I'm actually thinking of getting one of these to teach electronics to some of the little uh, people running around my house. That would be pretty awesome. From uh, lego.gizmoto.com, there's a post here. I need to own this Knight Rider Lego set. How many of you were part of the 80s? Ah, loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. 80s, 90s. Ah, I was young back then. Not anymore, but uh, back then, that was awesome. Anyway, uh, it's a Lego set of the 
kit which is the night rider uh the night industries 2000 pretty neat um it's a seven wide minifig scaled model of kit it uses only original lego bricks um pretty awesome definitely take a look at it i i think this is the coolest thing ever it's the coolest thing since sliced bread i mean how can you go wrong with this this is totally neat from uh, makesign.com again uh pixie teaching microcontroller boards to see this is pretty cool um, there's a Kickstarter campaign, the Pixie Camera Board from Carnegie Mellon. It's an interesting departure from cameras intended to be connected to microcontrollers like the Arduino. It isn't just another camera. It's a smart vision sensor. So it has its own processor and connects to your microcontroller through one of several interfaces. You can do UART serial, which is your standard RS-232 type inter, uh, connection. It's as old as time itself. Uh a SPI connection, which, which is SPI, SPI, S-P-I, stands for uh, Serial Peripheral Interconnect. I squared C, which is another flavor of uh, SPI, or simply through a digital or analog pin. Rather than providing raw image data to the microcontroller, instead it analyzes the images on board and sends more useful data, actionable data, to your microcontroller. E.g., a red ping pong ball has been detected at X54 and Y103. Wow, pretty neat. Um, the possibilities are pretty awesome. So anyway, definitely uh, check it out. Uh, it, it is pretty complex. It can detect and track, detect, track, and discriminate between multiple objects simultaneously. Uh, you can easily teach it what you're interested in sensing, which is really cool. So uh, definitely take a look at this. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quickstuff.com. And with that, I will talk with all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.